just to give you an understanding of why I'm really excited about this uh, new master's course. After university quite a few years ago, I started um, my career in the commercial world and then went back to academia to do a PhD in 2014, where I developed a risk index for depression using machine learning methods. Just seven years ago, this was really new. Um, but since then, I have seen a phenomenal explosion in the application of machine learning and all that is machine learning to health issues. Uh, I predict um, there is going to be a tsunami of health data coming our way in the next few years. And there needs to be health data analysts there to meet these demands. Now, SEEK have predicted, uh, which is uh, probably people know is, is where that, you know, you go for looking for jobs, has predicted a 28% increase in job advertisements over the next five years for data analysts. I did a quick look at SEEK on um, October the 4th, uh, and I just plucked out a few of these just to give you an idea. Uh, Telstra Health, we're looking for a lead data scientist, healthcare analytics and AI in Sydney. Uh, Western Health, we're looking for a data scientist in Melbourne. These are just a few. Uh, and um, Health System Support Group, we're looking for a senior manager data analytics in Sydney. And there's some idea of, of the range of um, the salary they were looking for. So what are the drivers making this type of career attractive to new entrants? Well, well, there's a COVID pandemic, COVID and everything COVID. For example, um, the University of Cambridge. <coughs> um, Andrew, can you just turn off your mic? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so the University of Cambridge published a research article in Nature Medicine, outlining their use of artificial intelligence to predict COVID patients' oxygen needs on a global scale. Now they used what was termed federated learning to analyze chest X-rays and electronic health records from hospital, hospital patients with COVID symptoms. So there's just a little snippet of, um, you know, in the academic world. Google DeepMind Health, uh, they're currently assisting researchers to develop algorithms to detect differences between healthy and cancerous tissues and to improve radiation treatment. So if Google are looking in this area, it's, it's on the move, we all know that. Uh, in our everyday life, um, health apps tailor our personal requirements and that they're proliferating. Um, dare I say for the weight loss apps such as Zoom, uh, sorry, Noom and MyFitnessPal, there are numerous more, they're, they're tailoring it to your needs for weight loss. In January 2018, that was 2018, the McKinsey Global Institute stated that workers will need to acquire new skills. As machines increasingly complement human labour in the workforce, we will need to adjust to reap the benefits. Uh, this uh, graph is from this article and it shows uh, artificial intelligence and its potential to create value across sectors. And if we have a look at the healthcare systems and service sector, we can see it's roughly in the top five for AI impact in billions of dollars. And if we have a look at the share of AI impact on total impact derived from analytics as a percentage, we can see that it's in the same basket as consumer product goods, banking, uh, media and entertainment and aerospace and defence. That was in 2018. So there is a great opportunity to acquire the skills for future jobs, security in health data analytics. So the need for health data analysts is real and it's growing day by day. Uh, it's needed by private health funds, uh, such as Medibank Private, hospital services, government health departments. Uh, our unit work with a Department of Health, the Victorian Department of Health, and we're using large data bases and I've been using machine learning methods there. Uh, and that, you know, segues into academia. 
but in private enterprise as well. 